G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here for the fourth and final part of the Pong series. First three videos are down in the description if you happen to miss them, but I hope you set up your right hand score and your your text and all that kind of stuff. Mine's all ready to go. I could play a full set of Pong for an infinite amount of time. There are two little things I want to do to tweak this game. The first thing is when you hit the ball with the paddle, the ball comes off at a pretty predictable angle, okay? You hit it, it comes off, you hit it, it comes off. It just sort of reverses in its direction and you can't do much to influence it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to change it. Ah, I lost against myself. We're actually gonna change the collision of these paddles so that the further up the paddle you hit it, the bigger the angle you give the ball. And so what we're doing there is we're changing the collision polygon. So what I want you to do is double click on top of your left paddle to come back into the image editor. What we're gonna do is click on this last button, which is set collision polygon. Currently, this is how our paddle collides with different things. Okay, this blue outline is the shape in which our, shape, our construct thinks our shape is, I should say. The red points are anchors in which you can grab and change. All right, so you're probably almost guessing where I'm gonna go with this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another anchor point in the middle here and we're gonna sort of angle these bits off. So the further up the paddle we hit the ball, the further the ball flies. So what I want you to do is right click on this anchor point here and add a point. And you can see it adds that anchor point in there. What that means we can do now is drag this guy back and then drag this guy back. And we've actually changed the shape of the collision model. I want you to do the exact same thing to the red, or sorry, the right paddle, but on the opposite side, so this left hand side. So I'm gonna stop the video. I want you to do it by yourself. All right, I hope it wasn't too hard there, but that's the you know, finished model. If you had any problems where you added extra points or something like that, the easiest way to get rid of a point is to single click, right click on the guy and delete him there. But for the moment, I'm gonna close him. Now to show you what that's gonna look like, show polygons, look at that. So show collision poly shows us that my paddle's actually a little bit round on the front now. So hopefully, when I play my game, let's restart. So it's actually going to flick the ball off in more interesting directions. And I just lose against myself again. But yeah. So the only last thing that we can really do here is one thing to make this game a bit harder. Right now, when the ball is bouncing around and it hits everything, it's going at the exact same speed. It's becoming very predictable. If you play this game too much, it's going to be way too easy. So what you could do is you could actually change the elasticity. Now, it says that the elasticity only goes between 0 and 1, but if you crank that elasticity up to something a little bit higher, didn't mean to type 3, 5, but that works. It means that the ball actually bounces a little bit faster every single time it hits something. Yeah, that makes things pretty hard. 1.35 is probably a bit too much. 1.1 is probably enough that when you start getting a bit of a rally going on, that it's gonna get harder and harder. But anyway, that's some of the suggestions that you can, that's just one suggestion, I should say. I'm gonna set some challenges for you right now, however. The first thing you can do is try and make four player pong. So not just having a player at the left and the right, but having two more players at the top and the bottom. I am yet to actually get somebody to finish a game with those, with four paddles basically. Next thing you could do is you could have a special block in the level somewhere that when you hit it, multiple balls fly out. So you get heaps of balls going out there. Last thing you could do is have multiple levels, maybe have some obstacles in the way that the ball hits or moving platforms or things like that. So you don't have to do those things, they're just challenges for you. Thanks for watching this series everybody. I hope you enjoyed this one. The next video series I'm gonna do is making breakouts if you've ever played that game before and i'm going to focus on some different features of construct for that one but before we go anywhere let's fi let's finish this up by saving your project in a very good location so i'm going to put mine in here do 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 construct projects tutorial games i've already got one but i'm going to replace it yep make sure you save make sure you save option um often please like, subscribe, comment down the bottom. I'd really like to hear your comments or any features, suggestions or stuff up so that I may have made. And I'll see you in the next video series, hopefully. Catch you then.